let's talk about the top five support cards for instants and sorceries. Let's go. Welcome to the channel. My pack cracking family, Clever Magic Trevor here on the Clever Magic Community YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We're talking about the top five support cards in a countdown uh, that support instant and sorcery spells. That's right, instant sport, sorcery spells. I was going to do the top 10 instant, uh, instant spells and then the top 10 sorcery spells. We'll do that another time. This is the top five support cards uh, with an honorable mention. Well, let's get into it. The honorable mention is Snapcaster Mage, and the reason I wanted to give him an, an honorable mention is because for a long time, uh, he was considered uh, the, the best uh, blue card around, or the most played for, uh, for a long time. Um, let's look at him. He's uh, only two, and uh, he's a human wizard. He's got flash, so you can throw him in at any time. Uh, when Snapcaster Mage enters the battlefield, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until end of turn. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. You may cast that card from your graveyard for its flashback cost, then exile it. So uh, basically you're going to get to use something from your graveyard. Uh, it's, you can just you know flash it in. So it's, it's it target instant or sorcery. So it's just it, it's only a two one, you know, Let, let's get real. Like he's not super strong. It's mainly just what's in the text that's gonna get you the benefit, but it's only a two drop, only a two drop. So I wanted to give him honorable mention um, because he stays on the battlefield afterwards too. So why not? Let's get in. Top five, young pyromancer. What do you know? A red card, you know, and it's an uncommon, uh, at least for ultimate, you know, right? It's only a two drop and uh, he's also a two one, as we saw with Snapcaster Mage. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a one one red elemental cre creature token. Look, I play Is it a lot. Everybody's everybody knows that I'm an Is it fan, and that's uh, that's the that's my heart, right? Of course, this card's going to be in there because all I have to do is protect him. All I have to do is protect Young Pyromancer. Uh, it, it's just a phenomenal card. He's been repeat, reprinted quite a bit, so his price isn't all that big or all that great. It's very affordable, uh, and all I took that into account when I when I placed these. It's what's the ma ma the CMC? What's the mana drop? What's uh, how how powerful is it? Uh, how often is it played? And uh, how readily available that you can kind of get it? And uh, man, it was it was a tough list. I actually had. Uh, started with 70 cards and we're, we went down to 30 and now these are my top five young pyromancer yes number five number four mystical tutor uh slash personal tutor it's a uh one drop which is huge right it's huge search your library for an instant or sorcery card and reveal that card shuffle your library then put the card on top of it Look, I mean, anytime you can tutor something, uh, it's huge. So if you want to search out any sort of instant or sorcery that's going to be what you need to uh, either close the game out or the next step or get rid of something on the board or whatever, it's Mystical Tutor. It's it's huge. It's played quite a bit. Uh, it, it's just a fantastic card. I can't, I can't talk enough about that card. Once again, I'm an Is It player. Most of these cards, because most of the instants and sorceries are uh, red and blue, are gonna be red and blue cards. You know, is it? Where is it? But let's go on to number four. It is Pano Panoptic Mirror, and I can never pronounce that for as long as this has been out. Panoptic Mirror, and uh, we're gonna see that imprints. Uh, pretty darn powerful this is a five drop it's an artifact that stays on the field but you imprint x and tap you may remove an instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost x in your hand from the game okay what's the big deal at the beginning of your that card is imprinted on this artifact so that card basically you know gets used on this artifact specifically at the beginning of your upkeep you may copy an imprinted instant or sorcery card and play the copy without paying its mana cost. Whoa. Well, what's the big deal? Uh, it's imprint, really. It's a five drop, yes, it's a, it's a five drop. But it uh, once you imprint an instant or sorcery from your hand by exiling and paying its cost, 
then you could cast the card at uh, that card at your upkeep for free, right? If you imprint extra turn spells like temporal manipulation, or you know, I didn't do the standard sets in this one because there was a lot of ones that have to do, you know, with strict saving and stuff have to do with spells and instants and 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 whatnot. So I just kind of left uh, those ones out. This is basically. Uh, I think 2020 and before, um, but like temporal manipulation, but all runs epiphany, ridiculous. You'll score infinite turns and almost certainly win. Uh, and and remember, mirror can imprint at instant speed, meaning you can hold off uh, on it until right before your turn starts. So, you know, you're gonna get the last say on, on your turn, you imprint some sort of extra turn. Oh, nasty, just nasty, right? Let's go on to number two, which also has imprint. Isochron Scepter. Isochron Scepter. Uh, it's only a two drop. It's an artifact. It's got imprint. That's the big thing. It's a CMC, and I think that's why they, I had it above the mirror. Uh, but imprint, let's read it. When Isochron Scepter enters the battlefield, you may exile an instant card with converted mana cost two or less from your hand. Look, you're not going to do extra turn spells with this one. It's mana cost two or less. Two and tap in this artifact, you may copy that exiled card. If you do, you may you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. What? What? I'm going to tell you what. I had this in my deck, and I had it with, uh, with a uh, counter spell. Oh my gosh, <laughs> nobody's ever playing again, let me tell you that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, basically from then on, you can cast a copy of the imprinted card by tapping Scepter and paying two mana, right? So giving you endless activation of whatever cheap spell you want. And that's, uh, in my opinion, this works best with counter spells. Um, but uh, you can do it with a lightning bolt, you can do it with with whatever, and it's just, it's, it's a pretty incredible card. Uh, this was a reprinted in Eternal Masters. I mean, so it, what a, just, what a great card. You know, I had to move that up on the list. Uh, I, I had it below before and I was like, honestly, I was looking at how much this is played and how much you can uh, basically extort people with it. You know, just, it's just, it's just mean, right? So what's the number one card? It's Mizzix's Mastery, a red card. What about that? Let's read it. It's, it's a uh, four drop. A red and three color list. Exile target card that's an instant or sorcery from your graveyard. For each card, exile this way, copy it, and you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost at Exile Mizzix uh, Mastery. But, but, so that's an instant or sorcery, but it's got overload for three red and five, and this is insane. This is insane. You may cast this spell uh, for its overload cost, if you do change its text by replacing all instances of target with each. Look, you draw this towards the end of your, uh, towards the end of the game, it's stupid because you're going to have probably a bunch of instant sorceries if, if you're playing this in your deck, obviously, in the graveyard. It's game over, okay? If, if you can exile all of those, every single one you played, for each card exiled this way, copy it, and you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Stupid. It's game over. It's game over. It's it, it, it's kind of almost, <laughs> it is almost uh, stupid, but I think it's uh, it's a game-winning effect, and I think it's the best supporter in the game. I've, I've just... Uh, I've just pounded people with this card. I pounded people with it. So uh, I just, I personally think that this is number one. There was a lot, there was creatures, there was planeswalkers. Um, uh, what is that? What is that card? Uh, the Jaya card, Jaya Ballard. Whew. Once again, red planeswalker, right? But she, uh, she was pretty intense. I just think it's harder to get, and she starts with a five, it's harder to get to a, uh, I think it's eight to drop her. Um, to do her uh, special ability, so I don't think um, I don't think she made it up that far because there. I think I ended up having her like eight, nine, or ten. So uh, overall, I think this is a pretty good list. I went through a lot of cards. Okay, a lot of cards. I figured there was about seventy, and obviously my bias comes into play. Uh, but I'm looking at game-ending cards or game-changing cards, right? Uh, things that can just all of a sudden change the game. You're in a rut boom, this card 
just helps you out. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that the instance and sorceries don't get to stay, they don't have a board state, right? They don't get to stay on the board. They they go straight to the graveyard. So what cards can we manipulate from the graveyard to be able to help us out? And that's where I came up with this list. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I missed. Uh, there's a number of them that uh, I could tell you I probably had on the list that, that just didn't make the top 10 for or top five for whatever reason. Uh, I do think this is a, a pretty good list, <laughs> but it's obviously a bias, bias, bias. Uh, and I, you know, you pretty much stick with artifacts blue and red if you're gonna do a lot of those instants and sorceries. That's just how it goes. Those are the colors. And uh, this, is, uh, this is my take. Let me know what you think and we'll catch you on the next video.